in this uh, video we will talk about the other part of adrenal gland we have already discussed adrenal cortex and the hormones secreted by all three zones so now we would take up adrenal medulla part and the hormones which are secreted by adrenal medulla adrenal medulla is the central part of the gland and it is derived from nervous tissue and it is ectodermal in origin ectodermal in origin it has glandular cells and these glandular cells are known as chromaffin cells chromaffin cells these are the glandular cells and they secrete two types of hormones one is known as adrenaline and the other name for adrenaline is epinephrine and the other hormone is noradrenaline or it is also known as norepinephrine nor epinephrine and the concentration or the percentage is adrenaline is about 80 percent and 20 percent of the hormone which is secreted is only noradrenaline adrenaline works during emergency situations and noradrenaline works during normal condition and we would see the functions of these two hormones but before that, let us talk about the origin also of these two hormones. Both adrenaline and noradrenaline, they are amine hormones and they are derived from catechol, C-A-T-E-C-O-L, the substance is called catechol. And that is why adrenaline and noradrenaline together are known as catecholamines. So this is the term given to adrenaline and noradrenaline together. The reason why this term is given to them is they are amine hormones and they are derived from catechol. So catecholamines, catecholamines. This is the term is used when we are talking of both the hormones together. And these two are secreted by the chromaffin cells, that is glandular cells of the central part of the gland, which is known as the adrenal medulla. Now we will talk about the functions of adrenaline. Adrenaline and sympathetic nervous system, they work in the same manner and they have pretty much same effect on almost all the organs and systems and that is why the together effect is known as sympathetico adrenal system or effect and the reason is in sympathetic nervous system the neurotransmitter which is released is adrenaline so whether adrenaline is released as a hormone separately or it is a neurotransmitter, the effect on various uh, systems or organs is same. So they both show the same effect. Now let us see the functions. Adrenaline is known as stress hormone and we will see all the functions and that would help us understand why we call it a stress hormone. In stress situation, what things are required? A stress situation is we uh, encounter a dangerous situation or we are angry or if there is some kind of other tension. All these are called stress conditions. So how our body copes up with these stress conditions? So here, rate of heartbeat increases. Heartbeat would go up blood pressure would increase, blood sugar level would increase, blood sugar 
increases. And how would the blood sugar increase? This is by breakdown of glycogen. The carbohydrate which is stored in muscle and liver gets broken down and glucose is released in the blood. And that is how blood sugar is increased. So breakdown of glycogen is known as glycogenolysis. So glycogenolysis increases. This takes place. Now we are starting with the stress situation. If we are in a stress situation, say if we have to run away from a situation, our muscles would need more oxygen, more energy. So for energy, the sugar level has to go up. If sugar level has to increase, the glycogen should break. There should be more and more blood supply to the muscle. And if more blood supply has to take place to muscle, heart and brain, the blood vessels should dilate. So adrenaline also acts as vasodilator. It increases the blood supply. to brain, heart and muscles so that we are able to work or fight with that stress situation. One more function, it dilates pupil, dilates pupil. It also stimulates contraction of spleen. Spleen stores blood. So when spleen contracts, all that blood is also poured. So contraction of spleen to pour the blood. Because spleen is the blood bank. Blood is stored in the spleen and it contracts so that the blood gets, uh, sorry, the blood gets added into the main circulation. Here, everything is helping our body to fight with the stress situation. We said that energy requirement is more so glucose level has gone up and if glucose is more blood should be sent to the cells that's why the rate of heartbeat also increases. But here if this sugar has to be broken down aerobically there should be more oxygen supply so it also helps in increasing the respiratory rate and it dilates the trachea so that more air can reach the lungs, exchange can take place and this oxygen can be made available to break this sugar to release ATP. And that is why adrenaline is known as stress hormone and the adrenaline or ad, this adrenal gland is known as the emergency gland. And this hormone, stress hormone and stress situation is an emergency situation. So we can also call it the emergency hormone that is adrenaline. Now what about the other hormone that is noradrenaline? Noradrenaline works on all these things, all these organs, all these uh, systems exactly same but in normal condition. That means what would be the effect of noradrenaline on all these things? Adrenaline is working during stress situation. Noradrenaline would work to bring back the normal situation. So adrenaline would decrease the heart rate, it would lower the blood pressure, it would lower the blood sugar, that means lower means not below the normal. Because of adrenaline it has gone up, because of noradrenaline from that high level it will come down to its normal. Glycogenolysis, that means glycogen splitting will stop and all that glucose will get converted into glycogen. That means glycogenesis would start. So effect of noradrenaline is exactly on the same things. But one increases all these things that is adrenaline 
and noradrenaline brings it down to normal and that is why we say that both these hormones they work pretty much same on the same system one works in stress situation and the other one works in normal situation what would noradrenaline do in other uh, conditions like here it was acting as vasodilator noradrenaline would act as vasoconstrictor adrenaline increases the blood supply to blood uh, sorry brain heart muscle noradrenaline will bring it back to normal adrenaline dilates pupil noradrenaline will constrict the pupil contraction of spleen due to adrenaline now that contraction would stop respiratory rate went up due to adrenaline it will come back to normal so noradrenaline if we have to sum up the function then it would lower heart rate it would lower blood pressure it would constrict pupil and it will reverse the situation instead of glycogenolysis it would increase glycogenesis that means synthesis of glycogen and if glycogen is synthesized that means that extra blood sugar will be reduced so it would lower the blood sugar now here whenever we use the word lower or decrease we have to keep in mind that it is not going to decrease it below the normal level it is going to decrease it from this elevated level to the normal but here we are saying increase that means above the normal and this is bringing from high level to the normal and both these hormones they work on all the systems all the organs one in stress situation that is adrenaline and the other one not adrenaline in normal situation these two are the hormones of adrenal medulla and adrenaline is known as stress hormone emergency hormone and because it is coming from the adrenal gland the gland is known as gland of emergency and this gland and these hormones help us prepare to cope up with any kind of emergency situation.